Hey guys, this is a very important episode of the Ranveer Show. It's a story that should be explained by the chief strategist in the 2611 mission. When Mumbai was under one of the worst terror attacks in human history, this is the man who was responsible for strategizing the rescue as well as strategizing the safety of Mumbai citizens going forward after this attack. Trust me as a Mumbai citizen we felt the difference after this particular terror attack we haven't seen anything like this since fortunately this is the inside story about 2611 this is ips officer d shivanand who returns on the ranveer show after giving us a spectacular episode about the indian mafia of the 90s you like this one even more i hope you enjoyed i hope you share it with all your friends and i hope you follow us on spotify every episode is available on spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world this is episode number 2 with ips d shivanandan on the ranvi show Dishan Andan sir welcome back to the Ranvi show. Thank you so much I enjoyed the last conversation. I hope I'll do this also. Yeah. Thanks. I think uh, it's about time that the police force of the country is kind of brought to the forefront in the world of content sir. And if you're talking about the police force especially in, in Mumbai we can't not mention the 2008 terrorist attacks. And I think so this episode we'll do is a special related to that incident. So I mean let's dive straight into it sir. Fine. Go uh, go shoot. I would like to ask you in 2021 how do you look back at it and in 2008 when it had just started happening what was happening in your eyes I look at uh, this incident uh, as a, a very very unforgettable incident but one would like to forget it as a uh, as a as a nightmare but however you can't because it's such a massive thing literally as i said last time it was a war waged by a neighboring country on a independent sovereign india which is having 1.4 billion people third biggest army blah 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 but it happened and um, uh, it is unforgettable because a very very uh, large number of people died mm. i mentioned last time that uh, the um, first blast ever in india was on 12th march 1993 in which 257 people officially were dead and the 800 odd people were injured and many hundreds of them were missing after that the biggest event uh, we could say was that uh, 2006 uh, the, the train blast 11 blasts about 207 people killed 714 people injured and uh, 11 first class compartment blown into pieces that is the biggest thing pakistani hand was very visible abu chima is the man who came there and did and went away but uh, later this one is the biggest one but in between there were so many blasts zaveri bazaar godkopar bus incident and um, various incidents have taken place there was a chain of events actually all over the country in the year 2008 jaipur 18 blasts took place bangalore it took place in surat about 18 blasts or 21 blasts were supposed to happen but didn't happen due to a faulty uh, circuit and things like that 2000 year was a Uh, very very horrible year as far as this uh, terrorism was concerned because everybody who was involved had lost someone or the other someone was very uh, closely related there were marriages taking place reception taking place dinners were happening all sorts of things happening and then um, good people high net worth individuals and all sorts of things happened so this was the uh, incident which anybody uh, however much they try to forget cannot forget yeah. as a country we can't forget so i think in 2018 nawaz sharif actually suggested that the pakistan government was involved in this but it was just a suggestion you know pakistan was involved there is no doubt about that because all these guys were trained in a place called burudike across uh, karachi and then they were trained uh, to do uh, seafaring uh, activities and all that and uh, out of a few hundred people trained this 10 guys were selected and sent they were like an army commandos only i have seen nine dead bodies when they were warm and one fellow alive that is uh, ajmal kasab 
so um, whether nawaz sharif says or not uh, indian government uh, has proved beyond doubt through uh, un or usa or to various others they have sent uh, uh, tons of papers to government of uh, pakistan because they were supposed to do the trial there lakwi and various others were supposed to be tried but then it is a sham they are all doing a sham investigation sham trial sham everything and then the two people who are involved that uh, tahir uh, rana and uh, that uh, other man who came uh, what's his name do, do, um, the one in usa is been kept there and bradley no mm. or headley oh Red, yeah what's his name uh, robert headley 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 not no, robert knight some other headley so yeah. i'll tell you in a minute's time so that guy was also uh, involved and he is a pakistani turned american and then he came here and to do this uh, reki reki yeah, he had yeah. ties with rahul bhatt i think yeah he no whole... ties he just used him uh, like anybody else would use on mm. things like that no action was ever taken against rahul bhatt or anything like that yeah david david headley david headley <laughs> <David Hedley. laughs> thank you sanjit tahur tahur rana is the other one both of them are uh, incarcerated in the usa mm. and uh, our uh, own uh, cbi and other investigators did go there nia and others go there and uh, they um, uh, interviewed them and came back yeah. um so when it broke out like in 2008 on that particular night as a 14 year old i remember it very clearly you know i remember there was whispers about it being a gang war and then eventually people realized oh it's much more than that but what was happening in your eyes and where were you on that night you know i was not doing policing work at the time i was doing commissioner intelligence for the state the intelligence set up for the city is separate the city police commissioner from 1885 or 1835 this is a separate setup the commissionerate is about 150 years old now and uh, commissioner has independent status and uh, then his intelligence setup is uh, additional commissioner of police special branch 1 so we were not involved in that i was part of the let us say director general of police uh, uh, office uh, next to taj you know that's the office where i i, I used to work and uh, then uh, that night specifically we were in a doctor's place near uh, phoenix uh, uh, palladium complex and we were having dinner with a few doctors and suddenly this tv got on and then this thing came and uh, went to the office and then the next 3 or 4 days i couldn't go home at all because i stayed there with the director general of police mr a n roy and we assisted helped and uh, the government the cm uh, liaising with the various uh, central agencies uh, army military all sorts of things happened chief secretary civil administration all that happened there and i was part of that aiding uh, the director general of police and various others for example nsc came we helped them uh, nsg came i we helped them various other things like that this is a continuous event uh, and continuously something or the other was happening so uh, the commissioner of police at that time was a different uh, person i became commissioner of police after the incident was over so so i mean what i am assuming is again you are known for your sense of strategy like throughout your career so you worked as a strategist to counter this particular event but i'd also love to know what the general police force in mumbai was thinking when this was breaking out because we we've, we've read all those names vijay salaskar himant karkare uh, tukaram omble all these people what was the general mood in I, there i want to take you to the little bit of a background earlier hmm. only the intelligence bureau and various other agencies had given this intelligence the american two americans have written a book the journalist and much of it is based on the rd pradhan committee where mr rd pradhan an ias officer ex home secretary of government of india and uh, also belonging to maharashtra cadre and uh, then one ips officer who worked as special secretary in the uh, cabinet secretariat that is r n d w mr balachandran v balachandran they were asked to investigate by the government of maharashtra later to as a uh, commission of inquiry and uh, then uh, they had also found and there were uh, six pieces of intelligence which had come but you know intelligence cannot be that on this day this time this place so and so will come wearing a blue mask and things like that it can't be precise in bits and pieces six pieces of intelligence is there in the two, two journalists who have written that uh, uh, book the american journalists very clearly they had borrowed all these things uh, uh, and liberally they have quoted at all that so it is a piece of that rd pradhan committee enquiry also they have mentioned about this uh, six piece of intelligence the generally if you without going into details we can say that it had indicated that there would be a sea bound attack the people will come through the sea and there will be an attack on hotels which are located on the seashore 
that is they mentioned about 10 12 hotels uh, taj was there oberoi was there marriott and various uh, the intercontinental mm -hmm. and like that on the sea uh, 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 coast whatever hotels were there they were all given and uh, the, uh, the 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 ig uh, uh, terrorism anti terrorism group group that is uh, mr uh, hemant karkare had uh, called all the uh, general managers of these hotels and gave it to them in writing orders and took a meeting and put it on record minutes are there uh, saying that this uh, kind of an attack can happen you should do one thing i mean he gave uh, 30 40 points to for them to follow close this close this block this that one this one that one all was told it's in writing and uh, so the intelligence was there, awareness was there, and uh, they were told, hoteliers were told that this could happen. When was this? But sir? that was, let us say, three months or four months or uh, uh, a time uh, before that. But then uh, the Pakistanis are not duty bound to do uh, as and when you are aware about it or as and when you got the intelligence. These kind of conspiracies they had planned for a long time and they executed at a time and place when they uh, felt comfortable. So I hope you understand that. So I'm also warning you and your viewers that the next kind of attack, if ever happens, uh, in the last, uh, let us say, uh, 12, 13 years, nothing happened. But Patan Court happened, Uri happened, and various other incidents in there. Here it has not happened because we are fully prepared. We are ready. Our force is very fine-tuned. So touch wood, it may not happen. Mumbai Kars, uh, hearing me, should feel very, very comfortable that they are uh, well protected because we are prepared. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the outcome of that attack as Mumbai is that the city feels different now. It feels much safer, honestly, uh, because we've not it seen feels attacks like much this. safer because the government uh, took special uh, care, interest, and uh, I was posted there. I was asked to execute a, a projects worth hundreds of crores. I will let you know later if you ask me as to what all I did to improve the anti-terrorism mechanism. No, sure, sir, you government can... of India also took a lot of care and all over the country they... Uh, uh, improved the security scenario by investing hundreds of crores of rupees and continuously it is happening and as that is happening they are tightening for example all the police forces are all uh, improved all over the country anti-terrorism squads are there there are qrts quick reaction teams are there in all the cities and all vulnerable places and uh, motor boats which are bulletproof have been given by mha i bought uh, bulletproof vehicles that is the vans which are running i can uh, give you the picture later Marksman made by Mahindra, 85 lakhs each, 40 of them. It is located in 40 places, ready with 12 men who are well trained. I went to Israel, met the commander in chief of police, and uh, brought uh, train trainers uh, from them to train our uh, QRT and other men that time. That was in 2009. Yeah. So they trained these men, 1500 men. We created five control rooms in five different places. So 200 men for each control room. The central control room is in South Mumbai where it was. And other places uh, have been created where 100 men each during the day are there. And they are the QRT, specially trained men with puller jackets, bulletproof uh, headgear and uh, marksman vehicle and uh, all that. Uh, they have done now uh, exercise of going into various uh, places which are vulnerable, how to enter, how to get out. The main thing in Taj or Oberoi was the, the energy and others didn't know the map or the topography as to how to enter, where to go and where is the kitchen connecting with what and all that. They were completely blank. Whereas now the NSG, we have given a place in uh, uh, Marol. Uh, earlier they came uh, from Manesar of Gujarat, uh, not, not Gujarat, Manesar of uh, uh, Delhi, next to Delhi in Haryana. It took 26 hours for them to come here. And then again they got, came without any knowledge or equipment and all that. First time this kind of a thing was handled by them. So there was a, um, a kind of a gap, I must say. So now all the gaps have been uh, filled and uh, our own. Now I would say we can prevent such an attack very easily and also tackle it very, very effectively in about 30, 40, 50 minutes. That is how. So there is one energy, uh, let us say uh, about uh, 300 odd men are fully trained, armed to the teeth. A carbon copy of that is d d d trained by the state police. That is called um, the uh, Force One. We created, it was part of my job, and they are also equal number and the fantastic weapon, state-of-the-art weapon they have. 
and also for mumbai police we bought earlier there was a refrain that uh, only 3 not 3 world war 2 vintage weapons and lattes were there and all no it's not true we had enough uh, ak47 and i had trained 200 commandos in 1998 for the org- tackling organized crime uh, shootouts they were there and uh, mr rami roy when he was the uh, commissioner of police had created 56 people including officers to uh, be a part of a qrt they were all there they were all there only point is um certain uh, lacune let us say let us say a leadership lacune prevented these people from uh, being deployed so that's where the catastrophe took place so but if there was intelligence on this incident um you know what why do you think the boat wasn't intercepted or like why you know all... i told you intelligence see the boat has not been intercepted um, uh, for the simple reason that we have 7600 kilometers of coastline Mm. now 12 kilometers from the shore is the responsibility of the police 12 to 200 kilometers in the below, uh, in the uh, uh, high seas is the coast guard 200 kilometers beyond is the blue waters which is um, uh, um, controlled by the indian navy or any other government navy so this is the distribution now policemen were not prepared because they are not seafarers but coast guard and uh, others uh, um, were um, navy i mean coast guard is from the indian navy uh, and then uh, indian navy was there they were all alerted they had all the intelligence but where they failed or not i am not going to go into that because it will be um, uh, blaming some other agency who are not able to defend uh, themselves here sneaking in need not necessarily be from the water it can be from the border all i mean mm. uh, land route also mm. like uh, let us say uh, bangladesh border is uh, porous pakistan border is porous rajasthan jnk and all this play catch of uh, run of catch and all that so it can be fr- from air like there can be an air attack a drone attack or it can be um, a land attack like people could uh, move in uh, into sneak into our border with the help of somebody and uh, then move into uh, like ordinary innocent citizens the equipments can be sent la- later or earlier and stack it uh, and then come and collect it so many t- technical things can be done what i am trying to highlight is the threat is from 360 degrees mm. today i want to tell you the drones are a major issue now and um, the ex um, uh, cm of uh, punjab has warned repeatedly before leaving his job that uh, drones are being used by, from across the border for delivering weapons or delivering narcotics and things like that so we have to be prepared with modern science and technology and my refrain is that the terrorists are always three steps ahead of the government because they are watching what uh, the government's preparedness is and they go three steps ahead and they get funding from the foreign government and the narcotics trade and things like that mm. i want your readers all the young people uh, to read the 9/11 uh, investigation report by the americans there they describe all that they had intelligence again about 9/11 a uh, lot of murmur and chatter was there in the um, uh, in the intelligence uh, network but then the report concludes that it is only due to lack of anticipation such a catastrophe of attack on wtc happened the that way al qaeda had warned them that we will use your resources and your elements and your facilities and attack your targets they did so um we got to talk a little bit more about the terrorist especially Yeah. Did you have a chance to meet Kasab? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the commissioner of police. I told you after the uh, this, he was uh, hanged only after four and a half years of the incident. No, our um, uh, highly democratic government gave him every opportunity by appointing a lawyer and give him every opportunity to defend, and all the due process was followed, and he was duly hung uh, after four four and a half years. He was in the high security prison, and I was the commissioner of police. I had the occasions to meet him and talk, talk to him. what was he like in person see he is a, like a small robo uneducated parents the father was a tear snack vendor uh, uneducated in from farid court of pakistan and this boy was a fourth class fail and he worked in a masons uh, uh, help he was carrying bricks on his head in a construction site and things like that these boys were all uh, completely brainwashed and they were trained in an army camp and then they were um, set without bulletproof jackets they all knew very well that it is a one way trip and they are not going to come back the very fact that they uh, came by a boat uh, from uh, uh, murdike that is karachi and al husaini was the name of the boat they came left it at porbandar captured uh, kuber owned by amar singh solanki and killed four five of them 
and that the their travel started on 22nd uh, of November 2008. And they took four uh, days uh, to reach here. And uh, in between at Porbandar, they changed the boat and uh, killed five, six of them. They kept Amar Singh Solanki alive so that anybody intercepting, he could speak to uh, people in Gujarati and save them. They came four kilometers away from Mumbai coast and killed him on Pakistani controller's uh, instruction. And uh, they boarded a rubber boat uh, which for which they bought a Yamaha uh, motor um, uh, from uh, Japan and that was imported into Pakistan. All that investigation tra tracked it as to what was the route and how they were paid and how they brought this and all. That uh, boat uh, was uh, damaged there so that these guys cannot go back and uh, try to escape. So what I'm trying to say is they were completely brainwashed to go and kill as many Indians as possible. How do you think these guys looked at death? They are told, not only them, every other jihadi girl or boy, a lot of European girls also join Syria, uh, this ISIS, but then they are brainwashed and they are told that you will go there to heavens and there will be so many uh, um, you know, wine, women and uh, various other things are promised to them. But my question is, who has gone there and seen that, come back to give a report to them? That the girls were so uh, young, nubile and all that and the wine and wine was sweet or salty. Nobody has seen. But somehow this brainwashing uh, does take place very, very effectively. And these youngsters do get uh, through the internet and various other activities. I don't know whether you know that four boys from Thane had um, uh, gone away to Baghdad mm -hmm. and uh, uh, other places for joining the ISIS. So uh, much after my retirement in my uh, present office I was sitting, one man, one uh, elderly gentleman who was working in a multinational company had come to meet me and then uh, I met him. He told, sir, my son is missing from uh, um, uh, Kalyan, Ane. So I immediately, I was commissioner of police there for four years. So I knew everybody. I called the joint commissioner and asked him, so-and-so boy is missing. He was a very bright officer. He told me, sir, not only him, Three others, four of them have gone together. We have tracked them up to Baghdad. After Baghdad, we have lost track of them because they have gone there to join the ISIS. Out of that, one boy has come back uh, there. He's in the uh, uh, lockup, uh, prison, in the last two, two and a half, three years. One allegedly is dead and two are somewhere else there. So these boys are where radicalized, that's the correct word. Brainwashing is what I used earlier, but radicalization is the correct word. These are all radicalized through internet, through long distance. So somebody is watching who is visiting such kind of sites and what is their inclination and how do they respond to such kind of uh, 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 temptations. And then they identify and uh, they segregate them and radicalize them. I want to bring an example of uh, uh, if these boys are all the poorest in the Pakistani guys. Last year or year before last year during Christmas in Sri Lanka, um, two, three, four boys carried a backpack and they, in the church uh, before uh, the uh, um, 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 congregation, they had gone and blasted and some 360 people or so were dead. These boys belong to very rich families, very mm -hmm. highly educated families. How did they get radicalized? So it is not that poverty or um, uh, promise to look after the parents and giving money, lakhs of rupees. This is not the only thing which works. Something else also works. So this Sri Lankan example is there. And also I mentioned about lots and lots of girls who had gone to Syria. They were all used as sex slaves only. They were all uh, um, um, uh, European girls. They, they knew what they, what they were up to. Not that they were not knowledgeable. They didn't go and fight a war, but then they were used for other things. Misused for other things, I would I would say. But then they were knowledgeable about it. They were radicalized. So they were blind to what's happening. Coming back to the attacks, um, the terrorists who were actually killed by our forces. Have you had conversations with people from the teams that actually executed the kills? And You know, you can't say these are all kills or execution and all that. I agree with your uh, uh, choice of words. But then this was a battle. This was a war. You must know they were fully prepared and our people were not given the proper directions and they showed exemplary valor. I, I repeat, our police force and our people like, let us say, Ashok uh, uh, Kamte okay. or Sadanand Date and um, uh, Vilas Alaskar and uh, Pawar, Chitte and various other, even uh, our uh, Kamble, all of them showed exemplary valor. 
I want to elaborate on that. Sure, please. Our go. Ashok Kamte is uh, his grandfather was the IG of the state of Maharashtra for eight years uh, after independence. Maruti Rao Kamble. So he had this DNA in his DNA, the policing and the, the army general's DNA. His father was a lieutenant colonel in the army. So he, his area of operation is Chembur, additional CP Chembur. When this news came, as you said, it broke out in the TV and all that skirmish and all that. Uh, happened so he came running from there and uh, the ats chief was having his dinner in the dadar in his house he left and uh, came to at station you see uh, not at station vt station cst uh, chatrapati shivaji terminus to be very uh, correct he was seen wearing a bulletproof jacket which is old and uh, um, a little bit uh, jaded then vilas alaskar came from kolaba they all congregated at cst from there they heard they learnt that sadanand date had uh, was fighting a brave battle there in the kama hospital on the fifth floor he was eating his food in malabar hill and he went to malabar hill police station he doesn't uh, work in this uh, in the south region uh, as additional cp he was in the central region so all these people left their jobs and came only out of bravery commitment to the nation and their job and their duty towards the uh, country so this is deshabhakti and nothing else say so they came because they were trained and they were trained to respond and without uh, uh, actually as per the sop they should all been there now the present sop are even otherwise they should have been in their own area anticipating that it could be a widespread attack but then they all came why they didn't worry about their life they didn't none of them had bulletproof jackets none of them had such kind of um, armor and weapons and things like that everyone had a pistol or things like that they came so sadanand date is the commissioner of police in the neighboring uh, commissioner rate he fought it out with them two of his men who accompanied him were dead and he fired at them they threw hand grenades on him there are two small shrapnels even now in his eye and somewhere near the heart we tried i uh, to our best to uh, remove them but it was not uh, uh, medically possible so he he gave put up a brave fight so others also this people i mentioned about uh, uh, kemant karkare uh, ats chief and also uh, ashok kamte and salaskar they sat in one vehicle and they came towards kama hospital maybe to uh, rescue and support uh, sadananda they who was putting up a, a brave fight there and that is where when they arrived these two guys had finished whatever it is and uh, then they came down through kama hospital at the gate they under a tree uh, they were standing waiting for a vehicle to come so that they can pick it up and go so this police vehicle qualis vehicle came they fired through the glass and um, as many people inside were dead except one uh, constable called arun jadav he is alive even now he would narrate the whole uh, uh, story as to what all happened others were all killed they took that vehicle and went via metro and went there to near vidhan bhavan changed into another vehicle because this one gave trouble and went via uh, your uh, marine drive and that is where uh, tukaram kamle and db marga uh, police officers they had put up a blockade and these people opened fire the name of the guy is iqbal uh, and this ajmal kasab iqbal was shot by the police and then kasab was caught by tukaram omle he took all the bullets of ak47 in his body and he caught so this is the first time perhaps a live active international terrorist was caught by the bravery of the policeman and uh, i want to also cite one more where one constable was going Ash i think Ash ashok pawar pawar uh, from um, uh, job he was in plain clothes and he saw one rpf men rpf means railway protection force in the cst where 65 people were killed so he was lying down in the posture lie, lying down position and his um, 303 was uh, stuck a bullet got stuck into that this guy pawar could have gone home instead of that because he was not in uniform he was not duty bound to go and identify he went there and told him that i am a constable can i help you there he helped him in uh, unlocking that thing and that seeing this this kasab and iqbal came behind him and shot him on the head and he was dead what i am trying to show or what i am trying to showcase is people came forward to put to to be brave to lay down their lives do the supreme sacrifice without being prompted without being given any offer do this i'll give you that kind of no they were driven by the uh, sincerity dedication to their job that is how we lost a total of 18 people
two from NSG, that is uh, uh, Major Unikrishnan and one Havaldar Gajendra Singh, and uh, three from Home Guards, and the rest of them are police officers. Mm -hmm. We lost uh, uh, Hemant Karkare. He was working with me. I knew him very well. And also uh, Ashok Kamte and uh, uh, Salaskar and various others. You know, sir, I, I mean, I don't know how else to articulate this, but you kind of had front row seats to this whole incident as it was playing out from a strategy perspective. Right. And you were in your 50s. Most young people think that many of my major life lessons will happen early in my life. And here you're in your 50s where you're witnessing I an was event. almost going to be 60 because uh, I retired in 2011. This happened in 2008. I became commissioner in 2009. So in about one and a half, two years time, I retired. So I was in the uh, late uh, 50s, early, I mean, uh, not 60s, uh, late 50s that way. 58, uh, 58, 58 and a half and things like that. But then we had seen earlier blasts I mentioned about. 93 blasts we have seen. Uh, we have seen 2006 blasts and various other blasts we have seen. I wanted to also tell a, a, a lone wolf uh, we uh, tackled in Mumbai called Dr. Muhammad Jalis Ansari. Uh, he lived in that Bindi Bazar area. He is a doctor. Alone, he got into some uh, thing. And 57 blasts, he uh, was personally responsible, single-handedly. So that kind of people are also there. We have seen all those things uh, uh, happening. So he started with the Sutuli bomb, as they say, you know, with that rassi they make. And in the police headquarters, he had gone there and put it there in the uh, parade ground. Some child, while playing, the ball went running. He went there and picked it up and got blasted. And also he tried it in various police stations and various police officers and all. So that kind of people also we have seen. But this is a concerted attack by the neighboring uh, country. And this is on a like a preparation for a war. What was your personal learning from this whole experience? No, my personal learning is thousand learnings that you are anticipation, intelligence, coordination, um, uh, picking up all the straws from the wind and getting people ready, anticipation, as I told you, helicopter view of uh, attack can come from land. So when I got an opportunity as commissioner police, I prepared it from all possible. Say, for example, they said, uh, uh, we don't have uh, enough bullets to uh, do pra fire practice. So I bought seven simulators for one and a half crores each and put it in seven different places in the city where computerized shooting can be done by people. So you go and fire enough uh, thousands of bullets you like and uh, sharpen your skills. So this is anticipation, this is practice. And also later um, uh, we, we started training centers in Azad Maidan. Then um, uh, we did uh, uh, 43,000 policemen. I did medical examination free of cost by the various doctors and institution. We created a complete uh, data uh, about how much healthy they are. And we gave them printed books as to how uh, I started 30 gymnasiums, three gymnasiums worth uh, three, one crore each, one in Worli, one in uh, Nayaga police headquarter and one in Kalina. They were all donated by the people. The money did, didn't come from the, and other 27 uh, police stations, I created a gymnasium, 25 lakhs each. So I prepared them physically by doing a medical examination and told them this is where you stand, you have to lose your weight and you have to tighten your muscles and all. We bought the uh, weapons, we bought the boats, we uh, augmented the supply from the government of India. So that way, um, training centers, uh, a place called Prerna near Azad Maidan police station was created where training programs can be conducted for uh, mental um, uh, tightening of these people, preparedness for people, and physical training was happening, simulators where they could go and fire. So all these things put together, did work well. Oh. Good point is, from 2008 to now, we don't have uh, any such incident. Yeah. Two small blasts did take place later uh, in Zaveri Bazaar and one more place, but then there were minor incidents, uh, small incidents. This kind of a concerted attack did not take place, but it did take place in Patan Court and Uri and places like that. So what is the future of terrorism in the world? See, and future probably... terrorism, if you ask, it will be all cyber terrorism. Uh, blowing up of oil lines and uh, blowing up of people and uh, if you consider the war which is happening in Syria or all this I ISIS and all that, do you call it terrorism or civil war or what is it all about? So all the uh, spillover weapons which uh, Russians left were used by others earlier, 20 years before. Now the Americans have left. So African, uh, I mean, uh, not Africa, uh, Afghan uh, government doesn't exist as the Talibani government. So where will all the weapons go and who will have access to them? And what kind of uh, uh, terrorism? You so you've seen Al-Qaeda. Then, uh, then you have seen ISIS, you have seen various other forms of uh, uh, terrorism. So metamorphosis would uh, be a continuous process. But specific, and the world, specific to India? 
specific to india is cyber cyber threat is what i would uh, be wary of mm. and uh, since the government is prepared and government has spent uh, hundreds and thousands of crores to develop navy uh, coast guard police and uh, various other uh, energy um, uh, mr chidambaram was the home minister at that time on a given date he wanted four hubs to be ready that is um, uh, to 2009 or 2010 january uh, he we visited by morning to evening four hubs that is uh, mumbai gauhati hyderabad and uh, one in uh, delhi perhaps so all these four places he visited and inaugurated in one day so these people have their land they have their training facility and they got their state of the art weapon but mind you i am repeating again force one is equally capable and we have it because this energy is meant for a zone that is four states but whereas this maharashtra uh, state would have a dedicated equivalent of nsg called force 1 mm. capable officers are posted they are well trained and they are well located they are well honed bijanandan sir i think we can end this particular episode just again so much information and thank j- you talking to you i feel very protected as an indian citizen i'm sure the listeners feel the same Uh, so I gave away all information which is available in the net and earlier revealed. So I have not revealed any official secrets uh, at all. All this information at that time when we created only it was there. I constructed a Martyrs Memorial for eight, uh, eighteen of them on the Marine Drive. Now it is shifted to Commi- uh, Commissioner Police Office. So whatever I have told is with the basic intention of telling people that you are protected, mm. you feel safe. don't feel demoralized that's the whole point even the police force which heard me earlier i i, I also organized uh, four um, uh, four uh, conferences uh, anti terrorism conference where dr abdul kalam uh, mr k p s gill and uh, the then uh, the nsa mr m k narayanan and various others 20 of them had come each place had five uh, uh, speakers like the level of dr abdul kalam 1200 uh, civilians and policemen had come and listened to that that was all to um, uh, the demoralized civilians and police to to boost their morale i had organized it two in ncpa one in uh, dadar and one in uh, uh chembur uh fine arts society so four uh, into 1200 4800 civilians had attended this sessions widely covered in the uh, press so these are all the steps we had taken so that people will feel uh, uh encouraged they will be encouraged to know that the mumbai police is dedicated and they will do their best yeah i mean of course i'm going to end it by saluting you and the mumbai police but i'd also love to quote uh, a lot of historians one of my idols joe rogan they keep using this one quote which is hard men build easy times easy times build soft men soft men build hard times and hard times build hard men so i would like to highlight you as one of those hard men sir yeah so, but the hard people will uh, get going only when the times become tougher and tougher the mm. hard men will be hard men but when it becomes uh, uh, risk taking their appetite is very high they build and they come up with the sterling performance only when there are challenges so uh, you have to have challenges to bring the best in you yeah. so t- tough men would come out uh, in the best possible way only if they are challenged yeah 100% yeah. thank and, you very and, much and the big big hope is that the podcast kind of send some toughness across the screen it would it would it would uh, you know we must pray to god that this kind of incident will not uh, happen again but if it ever happens our police force and the uh, government of india forces and others will be fully rain fully uh, geared to to face such kind of a thing i did make a statement when i became commissioner of police that if any such attack uh, takes place when i am the commissioner of police in 30 minutes their coffins will be sent back to pakistan that's what i said uh it was not tested but then <laughs> having said it in a bravado kind of a way i had to immediately uh, get into the job and uh, prepare people and prepare those bulletproof vehicles bulletproof jackets incidentally i wanted to tell you the next attack could have happened immediately because our guys didn't have uh, bulletproof jackets so i told mchi that is maharashtra chamber of uh, housing industry the builders in short form i told them this is the specification ak47 bullets can be taken give us donation so they spent about 
about 5 crores of rupees and bought about 500 bulletproof jackets of that specification donated. Somebody criticized saying that how can you take it from builders? I said no, I'll take it from anybody. But my men, if there is next attack, will not go rushing into the scene like last time. They will require protection. So I'm getting it. Government took its own sweet time to buy the bulletproof jackets later. But these 500 uh, commandos would have 500 bullets, uh, bulletproof jackets because I took a risk. Okay, my name can get spoiled. But what is wrong? I'm saving my men. Next eight, 16 or 18 men would not uh, die uh, because we are uh, because we are not prepared. Mm. Thank you. I hope that you as listeners of the show enjoyed this particular episode. Lots more crime related episodes coming up. Lots more intense episodes just like this coming up. I'd love to know from you guys which are the guests you'd like to see on the Ranveer show. Having D. Shivanandan sir on this show is always a very intense experience and I hope that you felt the intensity through this podcast. I've learned more from him in two episodes than I could ever have imagined and I hope that's the case for you as well. I'd urge you to check out the first episode we did with Shivanandan sir. But for now, remember to follow us on Spotify. Every episode is available on Spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world. This was D. Shivanandan who returned on the Ranveer show once again. Enjoy it. Share the episode. Thank you. Jai.